Good morning, my name is Melissa and I just wanted to do a video or so on how to gentle and halter break critters. Um, first, I'm gonna work my bull projects. These are not gonna be halter broke and they're, they're all better than a year old right now, but we will be gentling them and making them workable. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. So these bulls are, first of all, good by nature. Uh, we do a really good job here of selecting for that trait. Uh, we've had some cranky cows that we've culled and so now most of our critters are not going to kill you to begin with so that's always a bonus. And also we'll talk about 4-H project size little critters too. Again that when you're getting a project for a, uh, for a kid or a 4-H project one of the best things to do is make sure you start with one that they can succeed with. So making sure to select for disposition is always a bonus. So what I have here are my eight bulls. I'm gonna run them through the chute this morning. This will be the first time I've worked them. They just came last week to my place. However, they've been on feed and through the week I've been feeding them and that's also key to making a critter like you is to be the person that feeds them and go about it in a manner that you don't scare them and you're just calm and you call them and that's a good start. Starting there, letting them settle into your place, and feeding them for a good week is a good spot to start. Okay, so I got my first bull in. I got him in the chute. I got him caught. One thing I like to do, especially on bulls, but on anything really, when I get him in is I like to take, right here I have... Easy, bud. I have a rope that I have tied his head up so that he can't get his head down and get underneath me. That's pretty important to me. Uh, I feel that it makes it safer. It keeps his head up. So when they're frightened, they want to put their heads down and it gets to, it kind of gets them riled up on their own, just thrashing their head up and down. So if I find that if I keep a rope underneath their chin just like you can see it hanging real loose there it's not at all tight it's just to keep him with his head up kind of makes him think secondly what I did was I blew him off with a blower and uh, he hadn't had that before uh, and it's frightening at first but I find that they really appreciate that if you can turn on the blower on one speed and get it on their top line and kind of get that dirt work that dirt out it feels good especially on the bulls so that's another thing I do. So I'll get them in, get their heads up off the ground and start blowing on them. That's always my first step. The next thing that I'm going to do today is I'm gonna clip his head and maybe his neck. That is another thing that kind of desensitizes them to all of, to working around people and all the noise. And if I take my time and I'm really slow about it and make it a good experience, it really helps to quiet them down in a hurry to clip their heads. Okay, I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, so I got him in, I've got him blown off, and I've got his head tied up like I talked about. So I'm gonna attempt to clip a little bit on his head to show you what it looks like. This, is, this dude is exceptionally gentle, which is why I'm gonna even attempt it. But when you're clipping their heads, they're gonna pull away. No matter who they are, gentle or not, they're gonna freak out, and that's okay. So what you wanna do is just go really slow and don't react when they freak out. Okay, let me show you what I mean. Easy Bobby, easy Bobby, easy Bobby. Well, he's not really freaking out. But what you want to do is if they start pulling back on you, then you want to not pull away. That's kind of going to condition them to, to freak out when you touch them. But just to continue real gently applying pressure so that they realize, first of all, you're not gonna hurt them, and secondly, that it's not as bad, it's just noisy, okay? Okay, so this is the second time I've run this guy through the chute. In all fairness, he was a bottle baby, so he's gonna be pretty quiet anyway, but what I would do 
regardless is I put a halter on them and tie their head up just so they have like the first time we had the rope under the neck this time I have their head tied up so that they have the ability to put pressure on it and release it on their own to kind of like figure that mechanism out the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blow them really good and I'm going to just spend time working with him. I'm going to work his hair and make him pretty and just have him spend time with me and noise and his head tied up. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is first is I'm going to brush him. Uh, this is a nice stiff brush. It's going to feel good. So I'm going to brush every bit of him. Okay, so I started at the top. I need over here and I did I'll do all the way down to his belly and I'm even gonna do his back legs now like I said he was a bottle baby so he's gonna be easy to do like he's gonna be good-natured I do the same thing no matter who it is although if it's somebody that's trying to kick my head off what I'm gonna do is I'm going to desensitize him with a longer stick or a long a comb on a pole or something that I'm not getting my face down there, but I don't want anybody kicking at me anyway, so I'm just going to go slower. If they're more skittish, I'm going to take longer time to get to the point where I'm combing legs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run through the chute and blow them off and blow on their legs a lot to desensitize them. That's the safest way to do it when they're in a chute and you can get them without getting yourself hurt. So I will continue combing and then I'll spend time blowing him off and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so I've got this bugger all cleaned up and pretty as can be and he's standing here nice and calm. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to untie my halter here. And see, he's, he's done a good job. And then I'm going to wrap this halter around this post. I'll do that and then I'll let him out and he's secured to my chute and I'll let him flop around for a minute and because this is the first time but I have a feeling he might not do that but I'm going to try and capture it on video hold on okay so now I have him tied around I'm gonna open my chute and there he is he's gonna come out and come around and today's the first day I've had a halter on him. Like I said, he was a bottle baby. Um, sometimes they're more dramatic. So here he is doing his thing. Uh, he got himself all the way around there. But he's not really making much in the way of being aggressive or jumping at me or falling down. If he were doing those behaviors, what I'd do is I'd let him have his fit and slowly, ever so slowly, work my way up and get his halter off and that would be the lesson. And I'd do that a couple of times until that behavior stopped, until that behavior turned into this, which is not concerning to me at all. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull him up and touch him on his head and pet him and if I feel like I can get him to a point where I can lead him that's what I'll do is I will lead him over to that fence and tie him up I have a very short spot where he can't really get away from me he might get past me but I can get him stopped without him getting away and so I'm gonna work my way to a fence and tie him up and see what happens uh, this is just really calm behavior for our first time out. Okay, so he was a little bit feistier than I would have expected, but we didn't get away, and I got him tied up. So this is his first time being tied up and they get dramatic. They flip around and they go on their back sometimes and it's okay. You always want to have a knot that you can untie quickly. I have a quick uh, loosening knot there 
and the somewhere safe where they're not going to get in trouble. And then you, again, I'm just going to walk up and brush him. Easy, bub. And he's going to run and jump just like that. So what I want him to do is to be, figure out that halter. And remember how I talked about the release mechanism? You know, he has his head tied up, so he puts his head down and then picks it up, it releases. So that's what we're doing here, is he's gonna get his chin sore as long as he fights himself. We want it to easy Bobby, easy Bobby. We want to tell him that he's going to be okay, so we're brushing, we're brushing, and he might kick out, and he might be goofy, but that's okay. We're going to give him his space, and pay attention, and brush him, okay? That's what I'm going to continue doing, just spending time letting him be tied up here while I get the next one in, and then just brushing him and letting him stand in the sun.